All right, the, uh, the, the Kardashians, okay, they have to move out the way because here comes the Federal Reserve. And by the way, folks, I've been talking about this all show. Let's start with Ben Bernanke because that's where I'm placing blame or maybe on his therapist, right? His zeal, his zest to make the Fed easier to understand brought us this era of more communication. Get this, the Fed's minutes averaged 277 words when he arrived, 724 when he departed. And everyone got a little chattier, and now, of course, they won't shut up. With me now, Bonson Group Managing Director David Bonson. David, all right, so my beef uh, is James, J James Bullard, Leo Brainerd, uh, any member of the FOMC can make a comment, uh, and a lot of times it's not even news. It's not newer news, and the market can have these really shocking adverse re re reactions. I, I think what might have been good intentions now backfiring. I think there's two problems here. The major problem is not them talking, it's that they're so important in the economy to begin with, and you have a financial system now where you have people front-running the Fed, so then when one of them says something, you have everyone, especially computers and machine investors, that have to reallocate based on what they think other people are going to think about what the Fed has done. The celebrity of Greenspan was the first problem. The maestro. The maestro. Why do we want our Federal Reserve Chairman to be a a celebrity, a household name. The role of the Fed in the economy and in financial markets is too big. Bring it down, then no one cares what these people say. Now, as far as the Fed is concerned, what two, a two-pronged question. What do you want them to do? What do you expect them to do? Yeah, well, those are definitely different things. <laughs> uh, look, I know everyone thinks they're going to just tighten, 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 and they're going to put us in recession, and I'm one of the only people, I don't know if Danielle's still with me on this or not, I think they're going to blink. Yeah. I think they're going to chicken out. I think that's what the market is saying in the yield curve. The three month is still very low. The two year has come up. And I think it's because the market thinks they're going to get a certain way and then they're going to stop. And I think it'll be credit spreads getting too wide, the dollar getting too strong. Do people really think the 10 year is going to go to 4% and the dollar is not going to rally so hard that it just crushes multinationals? Right. It's just not going to happen. Right. What I want them to do is quit being the arbiter of the business cycle. Okay, I'm a, I don't believe the Fed has been the primary creation of this inflation. I never have. Sure, sure. I think they're distorting markets. They're making people make bad decisions. I want the Fed to stop doing I don't that. want to digress too much, but I gave up on the business cycle a long time ago. I mean, as the way it used no. to be talked about and, you know, the construction of it and the the, the, you know, it just feels it felt like it's been broken for so long. It's it's you know, it's hard to make decisions about it. Yeah. I, your Dividend Cafe podcast over the weekend, you said something interesting. Be certain there will be something about be certain there will be uncertainty. Yeah. I mean, when you say that, what does that mean for an investor? So right now people are saying, oh, my God, there's so much uncertainty. What's the Fed going to do or what's Putin going to do? Russia, Ukraine, inflation. All of that's true. It's uncertain. My point is you can go back five years, 10 years, 30, 50. Uncertainty has always been there. But what is uncertain changes? It was COVID. It was Ukraine. And before that, it was a, a whole lot of different things. Market investors don't get the luxury of not having uncertainty. What we have to be certain about is that financial markets price through that. And if you believe in free enterprise and the profit motive, you have something to be invested in. You got to be selective, avoid, right. uh, you know, booms and, and, and bubble type conditions. But fundamentally, I want people to understand behaviorally that uncertainty is a permanent condition of investing. And, and, and we have survived it. All the, always. <laughs> Markets have survived it pretty well, uh, to, be, to be quite frank. Uh, you scored very well, uh, obviously. Your, your energy, you positioned yourself in energy a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, and I think some of it was predicated on the outcome of the election. Your thesis mm -hmm. uh, on that, uh, the way you explained it to me, no one was talking like that. You were, were spot on. Do you ride that wave or, or has it gone as far as it can go? Where are you now? Where are you looking now? It has not gone as far as it can go, but this is not about the oil price. And you and I have talked about this quite a bit. You've always understood the commodity price represents more margin, but fundamentally what you need is more volume to really make money. Right. CapEx right now is one third of what it was eight years ago, and oil prices are at highs. We're not doing enough to support the production side. That's regulatory. It's ESG. It's the president. It's the woke, progressive, all this stuff. We need supply side. If we get that, the United States should be exporting LNG sure, to sure. Europe. There's a lot more money to be made on infrastructure. Well, we're not going to get that. Not, not, not in this environment. Yeah. I got to quickly ask you, um, then, where, where are you looking now in terms of dividends? 
Yeah, I really like that Simon Property, which is a big REIT of shopping malls, high-end malls, big free cash flow. I believe they're going to raise the dividend in about 20% this year. They have actually sold off a bit in the last couple months. A lot of our names have not sold off. The energy names have been really strong. I like Simon Property as having over a 5% They did something yield. really interesting. Uh, we don't have a lot of time, but yeah. I'm going to squeeze this in. They made a lot of ac acquisitions yeah. at the beginning of the COVID pandemic. Yeah. They bought a lot of retail operations, obviously on the cheap. What was that about? They were buying JCPenney boxes that were trading for $20 million a box for $500,000. Yeah. Now they're selling them to Amazon, repurposing them. Brilliant. These guys are really opportunistic. David, always appreciate it, particularly in studio. Folks, we'll be right back.